every relapse that the addict may go through, if they are open-minded, is a lesson to learn. They are able to continue preaching to themselves through the personal experience that the story will never be different. Mm -hmm. Unless they want to choose to be the foolish, you know, proverbial African fly mm -hmm. that follows the corpse to its grave, if you are able to, to sit down and analyze these things, it continues, you know, putting quality into, into, your, into your recovery. Mm -hmm. And to be sincere with you, 13 years down the line, I'm wiser. We are back and now we want to hear after Mr. Kitavi has been withdrawn from priesthood and now is sent to a rehab, what exactly went on, you know, what exactly, I mean, and get to know this is an entire 15 years experience that we really condensed to share, you know, within these few episodes to ensure at least you get the highlights, but just to say, like what we've just said, addiction is a disease, there is hope, there is help, and there is full recovery. However, not full or complete cure, because complete cure comes with change of lifestyle, being, you know, now you have the insight and you know what exactly you want to do. And that's why even at All Smiles Therapy Center and Training Institute, we've now introduced our rehabilitation services, um, where we are able to walk through and just to you know, for clarity, rehab not just for drugs and substance use, could be for bipolar, schizophrenia, a, a lot of things. It's a psychiatric treatment institution for all the mental issues, mental health illnesses and mental health disorders, and especially to ensure that one is now emotionally stable, they are now they are able to function well because dysfunctionality is one of the reasons why people need these services. And of course, to demystify the word out there where people feel rehab is like a jail or, you know, it's somewhere like the hear of rehab and their connection is, you know, quote unquote, there will be fighting each day. We are going to kill each other. No, rehab is actually a very safe space to be and especially for the victims of drugs and substance use, any mental health disorders and mental health illnesses. However, for now, we are here and we have Kitavi sharing. Now, it's on 16th August 2010. You've been withdrawn from priesthood, yeah. mm -hmm. sent to the rehab. So, share. Now, you've, you are in to the rehab. How did you pick up from there? Yeah. And again, that's a very special date for me because uh, it marked now again for these 15 years, what exactly was happening with, was that uh, I was dealing with uh, something that I didn't know what, you know, that I, again, maybe sometimes I would feel I, I, I might want to stop this. I might want to bring this to a stop, but I didn't know how. So 16th of August, I find myself being admitted in a rehabilitation center. And um, when I got into the center, there was a, 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 I mean, a, a slogan that was quoted there, and it went like, um, we were sick and tired of being sick and tired we were sick and tired of being, of being sick, sick and, and tired, tired. Okay. so it, it began to uh, again you, you can see the vicious uh, you know play of words that's mm -hmm. exactly how what i was going through felt then uh, the first uh, session once i got there i had um, another slogan that said this is the first day of my life. And two to it, because by the time I'm getting into the rehab, it has been, uh, okay, the 15 years, yes. But for like seven years now, you know, mornings begin in a certain way. There has to be me fixing myself with my drug of choice, which is weed. And uh, this thing has become like a pair of crutches for me. It feels like life cannot... Uh, 
run without this. You, you try to snatch it from me, I feel I will be so disabled. So, you know, hearing the slogan, this is the first day of my life, I felt like, ah, it has to be. I, I need to get an, a new thing, a new beginning. And um, so one of, uh, one of the things that I discovered in, in, in the rehab is uh, that um, now I, I needed to, number one, admit admit i just came because what was my attitude towards coming to this program i was just like okay i've had attempts in the past of wanting to to quit i do a day or two and then i'm still back and uh, now i'm asking myself exactly i am very interested in knowing what is it that they will do differently what is a new discovery into handling my my, my my challenge as such. And so uh, I get to the rehab and I get to understand first that uh, I'm sick. And it's not really easy to attract such kind of a tag. And that's why, again, addiction presents with a lot of denial. Mm -hmm. Here you are, you've been functioning in a way, functioning in a uh, because when we talk of uh, addiction doesn't feel like malaria would feel because again it is something that uh, continues adjacent to you feeling life is still working so again to attract the tag sick mm -hmm. because when we say addiction is a disease then we are saying you're sick and, and then I my, my first discovery was that or my first question was okay how sick exactly what do you mean that I'm sick and uh, again I got to learn something more that uh, 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 I was sick uh, physically my body had uh, uh, a kind of sickness I was sick psychologically there was some you know and that's what we call uh, addiction a brain disease that there was something that had changed about, uh, you know, the, the courtesy of these 15 years of interaction with uh, my drug of choice weed, something again had changed about my brain and that makes it sick. And then there was also another level, dimension of sickness, the social relationships. There was a very, you know, bad blood and a very tense kind of relationship First, to begin with, my mother, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people I would stay with, you know, th there would be tension as such. Eh? Because again, um, I wouldn't say that mine went to a point where I would steal something from you. But, you know, emotions of uh, managing emotions like anger and all that when, when we are interacting mm -hmm. was uh, something that I would pick in uh, interacting either with people that I'm familiar to or even strangers. And then again, uh, looking at my spirituality, my personal relationship with God, I, I was seeing there was something that was changing, you know, that devoted, you know, prayerful guy that I had become was not really now the person I was really becoming. Mm -hmm. And this is what, uh, you know, the program would, uh, you know, attach again. This, again, is not just your ordinary kind of disease. We're talking of not only a disease but a complex one because again uh, you see uh, but, but by the way what is the definition of a disease a disease is um, a disorder of structure and function that affects a plant animal and especially one that has number one a known cause number two science a collection of signs and symptoms then once you see a next part clinically they will diagnose so it has a diagnosis and equally beyond their diagnosis is a prognosis mm -hmm. what do we mean by those terms we mean uh, it is a condition that uh, number one it affects the normal function that's what we said mm -hmm. so addiction affects the normal function in terms of this person their behaviors will be contrary to what is expected humanly. Mm -hmm. uh, then, number two, addiction as a known cause or 
a number of known causes, yeah, which could be discussed in another episode. Addiction as a diagnosis, a coordinated, you know, uh, treatment plan that uh, will help you uh, get out of this. And addiction as a prognosis, a prognosis simply put uh, medically is how this disease will progress mm -hmm. in the event no intervention is taken. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, thanks to the part that uh, here I was, and at least there was, uh, and, and once you get into a rehabilitation center, what will be the first diagnosis? Substance use disorder, mm -hmm. SUD. Meaning what? Uh, like in my case now, it will be cannabis use disorder. What does mm -hmm. that mean? It will mean that uh, your interaction now with this drug has gone to a level where it is now a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. And that is why now it becomes a disease. Yes. Meaning what? Meaning that uh, the normal functioning, because if you bring out an addict's brain and study it, you will find that uh, it has, you know, what we were calling uh, uh, the neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. Neurotransmitters are naturally occurring chemicals of the brain and the body that play a role in different functions of the body. Number one, sleep. Mm -hmm. There are neurotransmitters that are responsible for sleep. What happens? The moment you begin interacting with a drug, huh? the drug begins to, because what we say is that drugs mimic or they copy the action mm -hmm. of some of these neurotransmitters, yes. such that one thing, uh, sleep is something that we attract naturally. You mm -hmm. just go through your day, you know, and by a certain time of the day, how you've trained your body, you know, you're just dozing off. If you've trained your body to be going to sleep at around 9, between 9 and 10, you see yourself just dozing off. And what happens is that, uh, you know, the level of neurotransmitters that, you know, excite sleep, Mm -hmm. has hit a threshold and now you're feeling fatigued, exhausted, and what you want is to just rest. Mm -hmm. Now, with your interaction with the drug, for example, you will find that uh, drugs like uh, weed, alcohol, and depressants, that is, they slow down the action of the central nervous system. What does that mean? That means they copy the action of the neurotransmitters that are responsible for sleep mm -hmm. you see now and that's why you might use alcohol to induce sleep you can do a joint just to induce sleep and that can happen at any hour yeah go find some guy who just did a joint they could they want to sleep in the mm -hmm. afternoon the guy just feels sleepy and uh... so what happens now the system of the brain or the centers of the brain that releases the naturally you know, the naturally occurring chemicals that, uh, you know, uh, you know, execute this function of, um, of, of sleep, they go to sleep. You understand? Once they go to sleep, now, naturally, you, I mean, you have now taught your system that if I need to sleep, that sleep can only be induced. So, now that's exactly, now, you sleep begins to totally depend on and that's why now it addict. becomes not oh. easy mm -hmm. for the addict to quit on their own yeah talk about uh, emotions feel good mm -hmm. yeah uh, 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 there's a there's a neurotransmitter you know called the dopamine you know and come to think of it dopamine have you had uh, at some points they call uh, weed dop can, oh, can it? it's dop from dopamine. Dop, dopamine you see now the, the way feel good they hormone. feel good yes. again you smoke weed yeah. and there's a, a feel good kick that you get from that drug. And what happens? Wow. Yeah, you, 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 will, you will do your joint and you, you are attracting, you know, the euphoria, the feel good. Now, this feel good is something that you're buying over the counter. It's not naturally within yeah. your system. So what happens? Over time, over years, in my case, the 15 straight years, happiness is derived from a joint of mm -hmm. weed. So now, outside the rehab, if you tell me to stop, and which I would try, you know, I used to find myself very irritable, 
-hmm. very restless, struggling with sleep. Mm -hmm. There are neurotransmitters that are responsible even for for, for you uh, to enjoy mm -hmm. a meal. Yeah, yeah. You know, a meal to sit down and mm -hmm. enjoy that meal and be, you know, to say, ah, that was a, you know, a sumptuous meal. We I call it the that process was the process of energy homeostasis. You see now. Where now we have, you know. Uh -huh. yeah, so yeah. what happens is that, uh, again, even all those centers are getting locked because mm -hmm. what they're doing is that they try to release the natural way to, like, enjoy a meal. They find that ah, you yourself are, are, are doing it uh, your own way. You're using a drug of choice, and in my case, weed. Mm -hmm. And what is happening is that uh, the weed is hijacking the natural system. And the natural system, once it's hijacked, what happens is that it shuts down. Now, just a day, two, a week, after you separate with your drug of choice. Now, this is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. It's called the withdrawal phase. And the withdrawal phase begins just immediately you decide, or forcefully or willingly. You, you understand now? Yes, yes, yes. And, and that's why there is always a discussion about uh, are people who are brought into, you know, rehabilitation Rehab. programs mm -hmm. involuntarily going to benefit? Yes, they are. Because one thing that is happening, one of the things that is keeping them from ever sitting down and ever admitting their problem is they're not able to say, um, you know, I think I have a problem because, again, what is their thinking? They're thinking while Thank they are know. in active addiction. And uh, it has been years since they ever spent mm -hmm. a day with their drug of choice, whether it's alcohol, whether it's weed, or all of them combined, depending on what you choose. So the withdrawal phase, now, you see, it's one thing to be in admittance. And it's another totally thing to get into recovery. Mm -hmm. Whether you came in voluntarily, or, or whether you came voluntarily, there is one bottom line. The fact is that we are breaking from a certain consistent behavior that we've engaged in over years. Mm -hmm. And by the fact that I came willingly, by the fact that you came unwillingly, it just makes us equal. At the end of the day, we are fighting one and same button. And that's why it's not even enough to admit. Yeah, it's never. In fact, let it's me, not. Let me Only clarify. Enough. Let yes, me clarify please. because mm -hmm. I know some people might be asking, what is this involuntary and all? So one thing, um, in our profession, we are allowed by ethics, by principles and by law to be responsible of you in case you're about to cause harm to self or to others. Mm -hmm. That's something that people don't get to know. Mm -hmm. Harm to self or to others addiction in this case most of the time um it's in suicidal cases where maybe someone comes and that's why we call it the principle of confidentiality and we let you know that whatever you're going to share is in private and it's going to be confidential between ourselves however i am obligated obligated and responsible to disclose just in case there is any sign or any action about to cause harm to self or others. So what this means in addiction, you already causing harm to yourself. Secondly, it doubles because harm to yourself is in a way directly or indirectly harm to others. Remember we've talked about stealing from them. You have people who take care of you. We've seen cases of even rape because in this case, this person has no insight. So there is a lot of other things, including the illegal element in it. So we, are, our work is not about policing. I think it's good to let it out because I know have encountered people who fear to go for rehab because they say, what I'm abusing is illegal in the first place. So if you're taking me to rehab, it means you are calling police on us. Number one, we are professional psychologists. Uh, we are not DCIs. Our work is not about policing to get to know where you are taking these drugs and substance from or who sells to you. No, 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 no. That's not our work. Our work is to take you through the process. The process of first what Kitabi is explaining, the detoxification process. Because you've spent an entire 15 years. This is a pattern of life for us to break in for you to start now a new life. It's an entire process, not a one-day thing. I mean, you've taken time 
to ingest substance all through, yeah. it will also take more time to get it out of your body system and it's what we are going into. So to let you know, if you're out there and just wondering what does it have to do if someone maybe is not voluntary yes some they are brought in by police yeah you know napinku and everything mm -hmm. they are handicapped yeah. some are brought in by police others they are just brought in by family members like you must be there and some people they are even wooed into the rehab a good example because i went out about it it's my brother you know we told him we are actually going after because the withdrawal signs and all that they were all present and I, I want to believe after he's done good thing is that he has permitted and given consent that mm -hmm. you can share about him you can share about his story. oh yeah definitely wow. so um one of the things and we were laughing about it yesterday because he had gone to see him mm -hmm. is the fact that he had the withdrawal mm -hmm. he couldn't meet me but you got to be told by some people that even the legs they are swollen and all that mm -hmm. so that was our way into taking him to rehab and so we had to use some means and we told him oh we are taking you to one of the hospital and he knew and um, some people came in a cab and we met in that hospital and then you know we just told him but the doctor has said there is a cure Mm -hmm. And you know, we were in a, one of the most prestigious hospitals, but now we had to ensure mm -hmm. uh, that there is a lot of queue. So what you do, I mean, there is a long queue. So what you do, let's go to the doctor's private office so that mm -hmm. you can be checked your legs other than queuing for long. And good thing is that these people, okay, it worked. It's not a good thing, but it worked for us because spending, you know, so much time without mm -hmm. even the rest, mm -hmm. no sleep and all that. So the moment he was in the car, he just slept. So he woke up when we were already in the rehab. Mm -hmm. And of course, chaotic. I'm over 18. You can bring me here. Yeah. Uh, you need my consent. And we told yeah. him, you know what? You are here because you're about to cause, you've already caused more harm to yourself. And now it's to others because we are also part of the system. Mm -hmm. When I'm sharing this, also to mention, we say addiction is a disease, a diplomatic disease, and a family disease. It's also good to get to know. Why is it a family disease? Because everyone gets affected in case of kitabi there is the mom there is even the church society that's why even the bishop felt because that was also a family we can just let him go just like that so it affects and you have a lot of things that affects even the family so yes it's very true and if you are out there struggling and wondering just call us and we'll let you know how these people we, we are able to bring them to rehab involuntarily because end of the day is whether they are there or not, the thing is they are sick, they are unwell. You just don't need to watch on them and just watch on them without doing any anything. Let's take action. So Kitavi, yes, tell please. us, how was your first day like? I would like you to break it down for us. Now you've gone to rehab. Mm -hmm. You've been shown this is where you'll be sleeping. Mm -hmm. You are used of taking, of fixing, quote unquote, fixing yourself. Mm -hmm. And now you know there is nothing. Mm -hmm to use mm -hmm. you have your day one mm -hmm. day two mm -hmm. even before we got to all this and thank you for educating our our listeners out there and our viewers because it's very important now tell us yes, how please. was it like and even spending just a day without these feats and the withdrawal how you are feeling when it feels so insecure because uh, it's like um you know, like I said, if, if you are using a pair of crutches for your walking and you sit like the way I'm seated and somebody snatches them, it, it, it makes you feel immobile. And sure of exactly how you will really, you know, move once you get on your feet. So my, my, my first, uh, you know, the, the, the struggles that I had, number one, were with sleep. Uh -huh. Number two were with the uh, appetite you know and again with emotions because there is nothing you know life feels so empty uh, what 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 is there to cere uh, to celebrate about life you, you you feel like there's nothing to celebrate i can't sleep and uh, you see now Outside a controlled environment like the rehab, the quickest thing to fix that is just go and continue using. But now in the rehab, and that's why, again, uh, like uh, a withdrawal from alcohol, you know, outside an environment where you 
medically taken care of could also be fatal. It could kill. Yes. So it is not easy. And that's why most of the time, you know, people outside such a setting will just uh, continue to use. And even a lot of people may continue using amidst the fact that they want to quit because it could be fatal for them to do even a day without alcohol. In my case, then, you will find that, uh, as I've told you, had struggles with sleep, had struggles with the emotions of the day, you know, just feeling like a zombie. Sad. So, sad, and you're not able to pinpoint and say this is the reason I'm sad. The, and, and that's why I say addiction, recovery, or rec recovery is, um, it, it feels like a breakup, you know, mm -hmm. when you are breaking away from a romantic relationship. You know, the, the kind of uh, emotional turmoil that you may go through. That's exactly because, again, they are trying to snatch a friend who has been so close. This is a relationship that I've had with my drug of choice for 15 years. Come so close. Now you're saying we're keeping you in this environment and keeping that friend away. And um, thanks to the psychiatric assessment that comes in the first thing you in the rehab. So because I sat with the psychiatrist and, uh, you know, he was able to, to, to piece together a diagnosis. What will be the diagnosis? The diagnosis will go around exactly what happens when you don't partake your drug of choice. And, uh, you know, you'll be there saying, okay, I struggle with sleep. So again, this will... The, the, the psychiatrist again will put you on a short stint in the withdrawal phase of something to induce sleep again. Yeah? And two, because what will happen, or what I would also discover, and that's why the, 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 the rehabilitation or the recovery program is a place where you have to... Now it's about knowing yourself. And the, there has to be, it, to be you liking the sober you. Yeah? The fact that uh, you may not like the sober you could be a big, big challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing is that I also found that now, if I sit down and eat well, it translates to a good sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, to be able to eat well is not <laughs> just something that just happens. You have to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Exercise, you see. I discovered a new, uh, you know, kind of you know, inducing my ability to enjoy food. Mm -hmm. If you exercise now, one thing that you will be feeling out of that session, number one, is, you know, thirst, mm -hmm. a desire to take water, which is good. And by the way, let me say here and repeat it again. You see this thing called hydrotherapy? Water, mm -hmm. simply put. Water and exercise is the most underrated detox. Mm -hmm. Today in our time, there's a lot of talk about detox and people are mm -hmm. thinking, you know, all kinds of sophisticated things. But let me tell you, my experience when I went to the rehab was that uh, when I exercise, I'm able to do like uh, some liters of water and that will translate that when I sit down and enjoy my meal and that really fast tracked my withdrawal phase, coming mm -hmm. out of it, and then I would also find that, um, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to feel good because, again, addiction brings low self-esteem issues. You look yourself in that mirror. People give you feedback. People look at you and they are asking you, Kwani watu wakikula uo mefungu wa nakamba? I mean, and you are there and you're wondering exactly... Because that can never sound nice. When somebody anakuangalia hivya na kwambia afya yako ikai vizuri. Uh, that is so bland and that is so straight. I mean, that's an attack on, on my person. Mm -hmm. So, what, what, you, what again also kicks in psychologically, there are esteem issues about how you value yourself. You are having a low, you know, um, regard to yourself. You regard yourself lowly and that's a low self-esteem. So, now that you... you, you because what, what, one thing that I discovered is that uh, uh, one, I'm able to exercise 
and I will challenge myself to be consistent in it. Uh, I'm able to eat well. I'm able to drink enough water. And this is something that I have been able to live through. And now remember that this is something that you have to make consistent, consistent again. Remember, addiction is a consistency. From using in weekends to a point where you're using daily. So something has to come in there and addiction again is uh, a pursuit of fun. You, there's something that you're pursuing in the use of that drug that makes it fun. So mm -hmm. another challenge that the recovery addict has is what will be the new fun? What is the new feel good? Mm -hmm. Now, as you stay off, because there's one thing, the, the, the withdrawal phase is, uh, you know, deals with the compulsion of it. Mm. You feel compelled to want to use, but again, there is, uh, you can't it's access. There. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the craving. The craving now is also supported by, you know, medically, mm. because the craving, like when you don't sleep, th this day that I will tell you that I will jump over, you know, the fence of a seminary is again because of the lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. If you lack sleep, you feel if I have something that can help me fix it, I better get it. The day can never even break. I get, a bit it, get it here and now. And um, when you take enough of water, again, as I said, detox. You know, the poisons, the more water you take, the, the more visits uh, you, you, you have to the small oh, room. Yeah. And of course, that is now... Mm -hmm you know, pumping toxins out of your body. And now, this is important to note. We talked of the brain disease. Now, you are beginning a process that is about managing your wounded or already mm -hmm. sort of changed brain. Now, it's good to note here again, in, in, in the issue of diseases, we have what we call the acute diseases and chronic, chronic diseases. Acute diseases are, are, you know, are conditions that uh, you present yourself to a medic, you're diagnosed, and maybe in two weeks, you know, that condition has uh, subsided. These are things like malaria, a cold. Mm. But then, a chronic condition, and that's now the seriousness uh, of the journey to recovery, and something that a lot of people in recovery and significant others like family don't understand mm -hmm. that, and which I, I would need that uh, people understand. Now the moment this person is put in a treatment facility and they are diagnosed substance use disorder, there's no difference between that statement and the moment like you take somebody to you know a diabetologist and they tell mm -hmm. them you are diabetic. What are they saying? That You've attracted this condition whereby your body is dealing with the condition of sugars, mm -hmm. you know, shooting up or low yes. for that matter. Now, what is happening is that uh, there is no day that uh, your diabetologist will be telling you, I mean, you healed of the condition. Mm -hmm. Other conditions that would uh, come under that category would be conditions like cancer, a condition mm -hmm. like, um, you know, hypertension. Mm -hmm. Those are, you know, chronic condition meaning that uh, number one and it is without blinking an eye that i say this they have no cure mm -hmm. hiv yeah, yeah. they have no cure so what do you do your medical expert will tell you that the thing you can do is to continue managing this condition, Manage condition. and by the way if you do it consistently the condition is not any longer fatal if you keep a lifestyle that uh, keeps your sugars on check, you may never, you know, have, you know, that condition. Threat you will still have a life. Yeah. Equally with addiction. Because uh, we're not treating you that you may be good after the minimum of 90 or more days that now you are able to interact again with alcohol. One thing that we're telling you is like, when, when we say... We, when we say you are allergic to sugars, you, we are telling you you are diabetic. Mm -hmm. When we say you are allergic to, you know, things that, uh, uh, you know, provoke your hypertension, it's a condition that uh, you might not be redeemed from mm -hmm. for a lifetime. 
Now, if only when we say you are an addict, we say that you are allergic to alcohol. That any time, at any point, wherever you will interact with alcohol, you will go back. The result the will stage. never be any different. Mm -hmm. It will always be, we call it, um, you know, the, 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 the insanity of addiction. And it is something that people in recovery struggle with a lot. Because people in recovery keep, we keep telling ourselves, because I'm in there, mm -hmm. we keep telling ourselves, I think there is a way I can drink again safely. And you know what? The bad news is that uh, any time you indulge again, it is never the beginning of the journey. It is the journey beginning from where you stop. Kama ulikuwa unakunywa na lala kwa mtaro, that will be the thing. Kama ulikuwa unakunywa na kosana na boss wako, that will be the play of the game. Kama ulikuwa umefukuza bibi yako na sasa by the virtue of going through recovery umemrudisha umerudisha familia na watoto, the moment you pick up again, you go back there. The same same results. And we say insanity is doing one thing over and over again expecting different results and and the, so the thing is um it it, it really takes uh, quite some discernment that you sit down and be able to ask yourself what is it and by the virtue that uh, no one has come out of a rehab and they never like we have what we call sleeps mm -hmm. they may want to pick up again one day and feel I'm going the wrong way. A relapse happens. Yeah. A lot of the time. A yes. lot of the time. Mm. Because, and, and somebody was asking me, and with these people who just come out of rehabs, and they have gone back again. Because what happens if their diabetic leaves, uh, you know, they get admitted? You know, they, they had, uh, you know, an episode of uh, their sugars uh, shooting up. They went, they were admitted, you know, the sugars were managed to manageable levels. Mm -hmm. They are discharged. They go back into the house and to continue with their life because they cannot continue to be in a hospital setting all the time, all yeah, day. It's not now, what yeah. happens if they just get home and the first thing that they do is to break their diabetologist's rules? They go back to the same Condition. That is exactly. And now, if they are there and, uh, you know, they, they've gone back there. Do, have you heard of somebody talk of that as ukichwangumu, like no. rebellion? Mm -hmm. but, but it happens, and that's why the addict uh, mm -hmm. can suffer a lot of stigma. Eh? And I'm not saying that uh, as the addict, you'll be there only to be a victim of relapses. But I'm saying relapse can happen in the journey and you know, the long struggle to break. Because what happens is that we talk of a minimum of 90 days. Mm -hmm. And then an interaction of 15 years in my case. Yeah. Now, what am I trying to say? Uh, my story here is not uh, beyond the rehab. I would not say that it has been a straight line of uh, keep of the drugs. Mm -hmm. But there is one thing that I, I, I want to say. Time is a friend in recovery. In addiction, time is an enemy because tomorrow will be worse than today. Mm -hmm. In recovery, tomorrow will be better than today. Mm -hmm. Every relapse that the addict may go through, if they are open-minded, is a lesson to learn. They are able to continue preaching to themselves through the personal experience that the story will never be different. Mm -hmm. Unless they want to choose to be the foolish, you know, proverbial African fly mm -hmm. that follows the corpse to its uh, grave. If you are able to to sit down and analyze these things, it continues, you know, putting quality into into your into your recovery. Mm -hmm. And to be sincere with you, thirteen years down the line, I'm wiser. Yeah, wow. there were struggles along the journey, but thirteen years down the line, and then again, there are things that you straightly and you know like one of the things that i can be so proud of is that since i left rehab i've never smoked tobacco for a straight 13 years wow. and nothing you know troubled me like um, a cigarette let me tell you it is an underrated uh, you know you won't see people saying okay let's put you in a rehab because you're smoking too much 
But if there is one drug that really troubled my life, what at what I eat as a story a bangi, cigar, a cigarette, you know, to drop off that stick like that and decide it's over and I'm not looking back again. It's not a cup of tea. And so what 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 am I trying to say in this? Even in my own case, in my own story, there has been uh, you know episodes of relapse but but what i can say and i'm proud to say here again these episodes have been you know educative lessons picked and the story goes on and i can bet you what this story was like in my eighth year of this uh, of recovery is not what it is in my tenth year and this is my in fact, to be specific, this is by 14th year, yeah, oh, wow. 2024, we just uh, began this year. And um, another thing that you will notice, I've told you that I was in active addiction for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So I've not even spent Enough. a time as long as the one that I spent in active addiction. So it's still a journey. And um, a lot of people will be judging the addict, but the truth of the matter is they need to be supported. I don't mean that they need to be babied and, you know, but they need to be supported. For some people, it may not be once. Yeah, a lot of people will say, okay, addiction is uh, very expensive to treat. Yes, it is. But what is the option? Where there is life, there is hope. It is either you're choosing between, uh, you know, helping this guy call himself to awareness and attention that I have a problem that I have to deal with, or you're just saying, fine, do what you want to do with your life. And I thank God for, in my own case, uh, what has been so supportive. One thing, in the last 13 years, I've also been working in rehabilitation centers. Mm. So, again, what happens whenever you see, you know, people also coming because you don't have to experience all kinds of addictions. You're able to see people and learn from them. People yeah. struggling with an addiction from uh, heroin. People yeah. str struggling to recover from alcohol. And at the end of the day, the bottom line is number one, to be ready to walk the talk. Wow. The, the, the rehab, the 90 days, for me what I did, huh, there was, uh, uh, you know, what happened is uh, I, I did my 90 days. Mm -hmm. And again, is also to Impress a level of self-disclosure. And that is again what is inspiring exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That I'm able to sit here, share my... Okay, who sits down and mm -hmm. shares about the, the dark moments of their of lives? lives? Yeah, there are people who, even there, are viewers who are looking at me and they're saying, okay, fine, I wouldn't want mm -hmm. to share my life that kind of openly. But the truth of the matter is, whether shared or not, the bottom line is, there is something that you're struggling with. Yeah. And once it is shared, it makes me feel that uh, I acknowledge who I am and I am ready to continue improving on myself. And this is something that uh, I will do for a lifetime. Because, again, 13 years down the line, I'm only saying it has gotten easier. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I saying? That if I ever, you know, we say in recovery, there are no off days. You work every day. Mm -hmm. Again, we equally have another slogan that says, if you relax, you relapse. You relapse. And uh, thanks to the part that uh, I, I seem to have attracted a new addiction. I I'm addicted to jogging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to lifting weights. I I'm addicted to hydrotherapy. If mm -hmm. I'm, I've not done, uh, you know, a liter of water before the first thing once I wake up, it feels like the way I would feel if I don't do a joint. And all those, you know, um, addictions put together, if I may call them so, mm -hmm. all those habits repeated over and over again, uh, if I don't jog for a week, I begin to feel a level of an emotional imbalance. Mm -hmm. I begin to, because if I jog, I, I, th th there's a high that comes from mm -hmm. it. And the, uh, feel -good the feel good hormone kicks into my system, and I'm mm -hmm. able now to feel good and energetic and, uh, you know, up and very active for the day. 
And, and one thing, and the good thing is that I know nobody will ever take me to a rehabilitation center to, to, to quit jogging, exactly. to quit uh, drinking enough water, or um, even to quit, you know, doing the weights. I, I think that is uh, something that continues to sustain me. Now, to get yeah. here where I am is not really uh, something that you, is not something that was achieved in 90 days in a rehab. And... The happy poor I was with or I were with in the program. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, uh, there is something now, there are two things that I learned in the rehab. Eh? If you go to a rehabilitation center, the thing is, uh, there is what we call an a lifetime and a dead time. Mm -hmm. If you go to prison, there is what we call a, a lifetime or a dead time. You can go to prison and come out as a preacher. You can go to the rehab and come out as a, an instrument of uh, helping people uh, conquer their own addictions. You can go to prison and come out a worse criminal. You, mm. So it's a, you can go to rehab and come out worse than the way you went. Because mm. it, it is about what thoughts are running in your mind. And more so, let, let me say it is about choosing the next right thing as an addict and choosing the night the next right thing might mean you know to continue consistently saying no to you know going back to the people the places and things that you used to do and uh, that is a constant choice that you have to mm -hmm. keep on making every day Changing you understand your environment yeah fully. you yeah it might it might call for change of environment, call for the, you know, the change of friends, you know, there are yeah. people, there are people you hang around with and your risk of picking up again is so, so high. Okay. Uh, it, it would, uh, and again, engaging in a journey of recovery is quite a mission, a big mission. It's not for the faint hearted. Yes. You have to, one, tell yourself, I have a problem in the first place. To admit, yes, they're saying it's a disease. Yes, I am sick. And to ask, to be able to understand exactly when they say I'm sick, what is it that they mean? And then, what are the do's? A lot of, uh, you can hear a lot of don'ts. Don't hang around people who are using. Don't uh, keep alcohol in your house. But then, what are the do's? Mm -hmm. Because the don'ts are not action-oriented. Mm -hmm. The do's are the things that you go out to do. And uh, when, when, when I did my program for 125 days, why they became 125 is because once they, I hit the 90th day, uh, I, I think my bishop had traveled uh, uh -huh. from, you know, uh -huh. the, the office and he was, uh, uh, you know, an administrator in another diocese. And now all those dynamics being worked around, I spend another straight 35 days, making it a total of 125 and days. It works but for me, for me, you know, what, another thing that I didn't do, they say, um, don't count the days, eh? make them count. Yeah. And when you make days count, it's not really about is it seven days, mm -hmm. it's, it's about what have I achieved. Mm -hmm. In fact, for me, as much as the program was prolonged for me you know because by the time i i was uh, i was i was doing even that last bit eh? i was no longer on anything to do with uh, to do with um, you know sleep i was able now to sleep well mm -hmm. naturally i was able to enjoy food i was no longer on multivitamins mm -hmm. but then again i was still on another drug a mood stabilizer Mm -hmm. Because the mood, again, was a little bit of stubble mm -hmm. to be able to... Because mood stabilizers help you achieve a, a level of feel good. Eh? Mm -hmm. And my psychiatrist told me that there is need for you to watch out on this. Mm -hmm. Because, again, you, can be, you cannot be on these mood stabilizers for too long. Yes. You can still attract another addiction, addiction. and you begin, yes, yes, yes. again, find, uh, I mean, uh, finding your... Your mood, your good mood, over the counter again, that is not any yeah. different. In fact, I would think it's worse mm. to, to again be addicted to the prescription drugs. Yes. Eh? So he said, uh, once we do, uh, because now we've done three months, uh, in the fourth, fifth month, uh, we will, I got tapered off. Mm. And I was very consistent and I followed that 
Because when we talk of uh, treatment, believe you me, you have to admit to be the patient yes. and have the expert, uh, you know, take the lead in guiding you. And it takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of thoughtfulness in terms of exactly what when he says about this. Because some days I would do, I, I would just, uh, you know, default on the medication. And I would pick, there's, there's a level of, um, you know, inconsistency in my feelings. Mm -hmm. So I better keep by the doctor's, you know, yes. uh, instructions. And then like that, it went on then in the, you know, sixth month. I was doing like, uh, you know, half of that tab mm -hmm. and uh, towards the end of the last two weeks to my sixth month in recovery, I got off the drug. Wow. But then again now, I was a bit consistent on, um, you know, exercise taking and, water. and, and taking uh, hydrotherapy, mm -hmm. taking a lot of water, eating well. Mm -hmm. I was looking at myself and I was uh, feeling, uh, ah, there is something new. There mm -hmm. is a new it's found a me. Person. And then um, again, now it's again, because, because you see, there are a lot of people who are not smoking weed. Mm -hmm. Pombe, and they are doing nothing with their life. Now, this is not the kind of space that uh, recovery is uh, inviting you into. You have to ask yourself, what is the worthwhile thing that I need to do with mm -hmm. my life? And for me, again, you see now, I, I was again confronted with another, you know, what I would call uh, a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Here is me. I've been eight years in the seminary. Oh, uh, yeah. You can imagine uh, people my age... I'm married again now around that time as I struggle with recovery uh, my classmates my colleagues are getting ordained and now they are reaping the fruits of uh, the long journey to priesthood. To, to priesthood I mean of course it comes with some benefits to be ordained to serve yeah. first and also I mean a life that is not mm. uh, you know uh, as challenged as uh, people who never work for their life. Yeah. So as a person, as a priest, there are the benefits that you are enjoying as a priest. So here I am, and I'm meeting these guys, and, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of psychological, you know, turmoil in this. Quite enough even to send you back to using, to, yeah, oh yeah. to forget, to send you back to mm -hmm. using. And, and uh, for me, again, I, 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 I embraced it with such a passion that... Uh, you know, I was so consistent for, you know, the first five years and I was thinking my bishop... The first five years of now rehab. Yeah, of rehab. Before we there go was... to the life after rehab, yeah? Yep. Still here. Mm -hmm. uh, now, before you... Within the rehab. Out, within the rehab. Uh -huh. So, the things that from your experience we've been able to point out, mm -hmm. first is that rehab is a process intervention and mm -hmm. treatment everything mm -hmm. takes place here mm -hmm. however people at times they mistake it to be a just a detox process the way you are saying you mm -hmm. can just detox and after you've done the entire detox now you can go back rehab that's not the process of rehab what kitabi is telling us is it's here for treatment intervention full recovery and not full cure like there yeah. is no complete cure yeah if you dare relax, you relapse. It's yeah. good to note. Yeah. And again, you're already prone. This is a disease and a chronic one. By the way, we say addiction. There is no cure for addiction. Yeah. Cure comes with complete change of lifestyle. Yeah. This goes out to people who ask, is there really does like rehab work? Because I've seen people going in and out. First, it depends with where you're taking your people. Because for mm. rehabs run by professionals, that is uh, where we have psychiatry, care, psychologists. We are all there. We call it a multidisciplinary team. Mm -hmm. What we do the moment you come in, just what Ketavi has explained, mm -hmm. we must do your psychiatric intake. This is to assess everything, the presence of any mental illness, mental disorders, and definitely if you're coming in because of substance use, that now becomes the substance use disorder. And of course, we classify as per the substance you've been using. Again, we also have, we've said other mental illnesses and mental disorders. At the same time, so after knowing this is what I have, 
you are taken through what we call now uh, the normal with a biopsychologist, the counseling, as an individual. This helps you even process the things that maybe in a way led to you getting into addiction. Process the entire thing, the entire 15 years. And at the same time, as you're doing this, there is now the medication to stabilize you. We are talking about the emotional stability. Remember, these are some, a time we actually don't rush into counseling because at the time this person has no insight. So what exactly are you communicating with someone without insight? Mm -hmm. We allow them time. However, we also have a lot of group activities. Yeah, and the and, program uh, number one, uh -huh. the program in a rehab, eh, it's good, number one, to understand that there are tools because yes. the tools that uh, cannot be found anywhere other than in the rehab. In a where do you find? It's, it's where do you Kitabi. find? Uh, it's good to know. Yeah, in a professional, in a professional way. rehabilitation center. Because yeah. nowadays, you know, people will even lock someone. And when you ask, they are in a rehab because we are locking. We've said they withdraw. In fact, this is what I tell people: mm -hmm. if completely you are not able to take this person to a rehabilitation center, mm -hmm. please allow them to continue with their drinking, whatever they are doing. But be ready to bury them. Be ready to bury them however why do you allow them because withdraw of just come you lock them somewhere without the professional intervention that is near death that's yeah. like murder yeah. you are killing this person yeah. some withdrawal symptoms they are so fatal that even a day or a place another thing that i've seen eh, people mm -hmm. doing eh, you know a place where they use you you, you heard how i defined the withdrawal phase mm -hmm. eh? somebody yeah. withdraws outside uh, uh um, you know the the setting of a rehab eh? mm -hmm. and then you're there maybe even through a phone call that can be so careless and irresponsible and mm -hmm. in fact unprofessional but it may happen mm -hmm. where you 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 are able to ask okay what kind of um, and somebody is irresponsibly saying okay we can give give them some medication now that that can be so dangerous because to be sincere with you people in that withdrawal phase do you know you can even get suicidal because what happens, what happens is that uh, the, the mask that has been there, for some people, addiction has snatched so much in their lives. So much that uh, the moment this mask that they've, you know, stood behind falls and they see things in reality, they don't even want to fathom that this is them. Yes. Yeah? Here is you coming from maybe you were doing so so well in life you had a family academically you 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 were successful you got a good job and then you dived you know headlong into an addiction that you know left you having lost everything lost your health lost your family lost your job lost your finances mm -hmm. lost all relationship of any kind Lost even that, you know, how you value yourself. And then the moment you, 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 you just, you know, get off this space, you just check back and there is nothing you want other than just die. Yeah. Now, the moment somebody introduces something of that sort, because you can, because this person could also be suicidal. In, it it in, is a sign yeah. of addiction. Yeah. Suicide, it is. Yes, suicide is, uh, is, is, mm -hmm. suicide is a sign. Yeah, a symptom, it's a symptom. An of... aftermath of uh, when you are not able to. Because some people feel, if I cannot really come out of this, what's, yes. what's the need for living? Now, you see, so that's why this environment is very, very important. An environment where if it is suicide, you're able to be dealt. It's help, to manage. You know, to manage that. If it is withdrawal, it is managed professionally. If it gain its denial, the involuntary person, where do you see 17 people seated in what we call a therapeutic circle? Mm. People who are able to say, okay, my name is Kitavi and I'm here uh, recovering from weed. Now, that already, that therapeutic circle is a tool that cannot be found anywhere. We call it okay. the therapeutic community. Mm. Because it helps now break the stigma. It breaks now even the denial. Because if this is so and so, and he says that he has a problem, I'm able now to come out of my closet exactly. and say, fine. You know what? And that's exactly mm. what uh, happens. You know, you will be welcomed and uh, you will feel oh if these people are able to 
this clause about themselves. Others will tell you, by the way, we came in equally the same same circumstances. We were cheated, we were coming for a job, yeah. we were brought here in handcuffs and we were put mm. here. So you feel, ah, finally, I'm not alone. You are many. Again, so this therapeutic community is very key in terms of uh, and how you know if if uh, you know if the area is well managed if a center is well managed the good thing is that uh, it begins to bring out a culture of you know success stories based on because if these people tell each other the truth what will happen is that you'll be helped to break your denial yes. you will be helped to admit that i have a challenge and even as you come out of the rehab, maybe there could be a friend here now whom you can, who is just a call away. Mm -hmm. And even the support, a new support system. A new system. support system. So, um... Yeah, and so, also to add on that, for the uh, rehab and the processes, like now I was talking to my brother and he was like, you know, the same guy who was saying, I am not yet to the level of rehab. Now, gaining, slowly gaining uh, insight and is able now to even talk about, uh, here we are with uh, priests, we are with doctors. Like, not to say we are not glorifying addiction because it's a diplomatic decision for everyone, but we are saying this is another support system. We are all here for help. Uh, and like and now, so let me ask you, Tisa, yeah? mm -hmm. and I, you've shared with, with me that you're yes. a Christian. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been into a mosque? Mm, no, I've never been. You've never been into a mosque. Yes. So, come to think of it, you know, when you are outside the rehab, eh, it feels like it is a dark world, like the way you, you are there wondering exactly what happens in a mosque. Mm -hmm. And until maybe you sit with a Muslim and they tell you, you know what, uh, this is one, two, three that happens. Equally, for a Muslim who have never been into a church, there can be so many stories that they can hear about a church. Yes. And mostly the negative ones, of course. Mm -hmm. That's exactly also what happens with the rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Until you've gone beyond that gate. Yeah, and you get there, there is, there is, there are, there are so, you know, weird stories that could be told. Mm -hmm. And um, again, in our country, because rehabilitation right now is uh, in private institutions mostly. Yes, yes. The only, uh, you know, government, government public, institution yes, that we have yes, that uh, is yes. running a court, you mm. know, is maybe one. You understand? It's actually Nationally. the only one. And yeah. people have stigmatized because you see, when we were growing up, the definition we knew yeah, of the moment was, it is a bad place. Flani, and, and that's exactly so when you hear of rehab now what comes in your mind people will think mother yeah. and even that mother i'm demist, uh, we want to demystify mm. the sense mother is a good rehabilitation yes hospital. a very good rehabilitation a center by the way hospital, government um, run by trained well trained psychiatric and why we are saying this um mm -hmm. is because there is just the stigma you know you will hear people talk about you you need to be in that place or, yeah so it comes you are a mother case exactly. the moment they so say you are a mother case they are something. saying yeah yeah, and, and I, I think and, that's, and that's now we need to fight again. Yeah, so so yeah. now beyond the gate of the rehab, uh, it is a totally new... It's a new environment. New environment. And a lovely one. A new and a lovely one, by the way. And um, the, the, at the end of the day, a place where... Because what does the word rehabilitation mean it means going back to the self yeah yes going back to the self and uh, you know digging into and and, uh, and uh, i think is it mahatma ganti who says uh, a life that is not evaluated is not worth living so can you imagine a life that is uh, evaluated in a straight 90 days of course, it's been 15 years. Yeah. It's quite a good experience. A place where that you will be able to sit down and sit in a sober space, whether yes. you like it or not. Oh, yeah. Because for rehabs that are well run, the first thing is to ensure that that is a clean environment, whether you're liking it or not. Mm -hmm. You'll have to go through a straight 
minimum of 90 days because some people will stay in arrear for six months yeah. because again the Did minimum you... 90 days is subject to evaluation yes so again now what happens is that uh, it's a time to sit down it's a time to rediscover yourself people go for one week retreats and if, the, the, if it's about faith they will tell you i was revived come to think of it a 90 day program with not just sitting there idly but again with also because this is where you know the, the kind of uh, you know um facts that i'm sharing have been gathered through mostly sitting in a recovery mm -hmm. program in a session where there will be a counselor where there will be people also in, in recovery yes. because people tend to change if they see somebody who has changed exactly uh, and that is why one thing and that's uh, how we will meet eh, Teresa. that's Definitely. how we met because uh, uh for the last again 13 years mm -hmm. i've been constantly on call mm -hmm. to be able to go back to that center mm -hmm. still share my experience for the benefit of another and after me there have been other success stories yeah. and again um you know the 12th step of the alcoholic anonymous program which is also part of the program mm. that we will be, you'll be able to go to yes. it is an invitation you know having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps mm -hmm. we were ready to carry the message to another person who is in the journey of recovery Exactly. Now, and we say you, you can't you can't uh, it is by giving it that you're keeping it it is by also that sharing it is by constantly reminding yourself this is who i am that you still are able it is by telling my story here by the way before you benefit my dear viewer you are benefiting Kitavi is benefiting because i will walk out of this seat mm. I mean, I, I reminding myself, you know what? Keep going. Exactly. You know what? Uh, that is you. That is not a, a fictional guy. You're talking about yourself. That is your experience. And it even motivates me to continue to put, to invest in my recovery. Wow. It pushes me. It reminds me who I am. It has just reminded me that Today is 14. I, I'm not now saying, um, you know, it's 13 years. I've discovered it's 2024. I yeah, mean, no, we, we are, we are we're making year. another step, a 14th mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And um, it has not been uh, 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 a straight journey, but it is has been a journey full of lessons, lessons that have gotten us here. What has been the benefits? A better health, yeah. Uh, better health physically, mentally, mm -hmm. and uh, this is my uh, as we as we bring this to maybe a, a close. The thing is, where there is hope, there where there is life, there is hope. Where think, there is life, there, there is, is hope. hope. Don't give up on that. Uh, you significant other. Yes. Maybe they left rehab. They relapsed. It is. Again, you may give them another opportunity. Maybe they never stepped into a rehab. I want to believe that with our interaction here, yes, yes, you, yes, you, yes. you are more, you are clearer of exactly mm. what is a rehab. Yes. And uh, maybe you've been sitting with them and you are wondering, at the no. end of the day, they are sick. They are sick and uh, in fact tired of being sick and tired of being sick, sick and tired, tired you understand wow. they are in that vicious uh, circle mm. and they may not know how i think in our uh, this episode we've been able to bring out how, how we've been able even to, how to, to open the care. gate you know yes. for you to peep into a rehab you know exactly i want to believe that uh, this will touch somebody out there that they can be able to say and also, you maybe they are in that space where they are telling you they have no problem. And you are waiting that they admit one day and tell you, you know what? We are ready. We think it's a problem. You might wait for a lifetime. They don't. Take Addiction charge. comes with denial because yeah. 
it's the addicted brain. So it's not them. It's actually the addicted yeah. brain. So it takes other people so in this case, to identify they need mm -hmm. help and come in for their help. And Kitavi, yes, I please. will not let you go before we, fin we finalize on. Mm -hmm. So is Kitavi today a priest? Is Kitavi married? <laughs> I, I, I think briefly, of course, this is not about your personal life. Yep, yeah. Uh, but again, because... And I have nothing to hide about, about my personal it. life. Yes. Because uh, it's a summon in itself. Something Let's, that I'm very proud of, a book that I want people to read. Great. Tell That's us, me. is Ketabi married or Ketabi went back to, have you come from parish today? No, 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 no. Yes. I, uh, again, because uh, I told you I was officially withdrawn from, uh, from, um, the re from formation to, yes. by the time I'm going to the rehab, I was officially withdrawn from the seminary. Mm -hmm. So again, um, so I I would struggle and still want to see if I get another opportunity. Mm -hmm. And at the point that uh, this didn't materialize, I decided to get married. Mm -hmm. So I am married and um, a father of four. And oh, I thank God. I thank God because um, I, I it is I didn't become that uh, you know. Roman Catholic uh, father, mm -hmm. but I'm a father in my house. Oh, and, you are uh, a father in yes, your house. Yes, I'm a father in my house, yes, and that yes, one is something yes. that I am so proud of. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it keeps reminding me that uh, I am doing the right thing because I talked of just choosing the next right thing. You see, if you're not becoming a Catholic priest, and uh, you know it's demanding. Uh, you know, celibacy as a condition, the only natural call maybe that you may answer is to get married, mm -hmm. and which I did, and I thank God for it. It has also grown me and taken me to another level, because again, family is about also committing your life and taking responsibility for not only you and another person, taking care of another person. And so I'm very happy, and... Um, uh, other than that, I, I am I'm a counselor, mm. and I, I I I bring this experience of fifteen years of interaction with my with my own journey to my own again, um, you know, support for a client somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I am also in uh, addiction counseling, mm. and. Uh, I really, you know, take it with a lot of passion. And at the end of the day, finally, it also makes me feel that I'm achieving what was, again, my, my dream. Because my biggest dream to become a priest was at least to contribute in conversion. And I don't think there is anybody who needs conversion like the addict. Okay. So again, um, somehow, some way. Area. My calling is still, uh, you know, taking shape. Yes. Not specifically now as a priest. But, but then again, I, I am, the I am, I'm an, I'm an agent of change. Yes. And uh, very passionate. And again, a wounded healer. Something because coming. A wounded healer. Yes. Having a wounded gone healer. Experience. Yeah. And, now and that is why I, I have a lot of empathy for you know people struggling with addiction because any time I see them I see myself if I I see you treating a person who is in addiction you know in in, in a way that is not dignified I also feel because I I am like that is me exactly in my active yeah, days, of, yes. uh, days of addiction and wow. the journey is on um we're not we're not yet there and uh, I appreciate it so far, and I'm still ready to still go another day. Well, thank you so much, Kitavi. Thank you, thank you. I think if I add anything to what he has shared today, I'll just be diluting, but just to let you know, addiction is a disease, a diplomatic disease, and addiction is a family disease. I think from Kitavi sharing, we've been able to learn about all these things, and we'll be able now to even break it down more further for you to get to understand about it. Now from even the psychological part of it, 
as well as now the experience. So you will be seeing Kitabi much more here. This we are calling it beyond addiction. And the reason why we are calling it beyond addiction is because we will be dealing with addictions, addictions of all types and forms, as well as other mental illness and mental disorders and bring it out to you. We want to create awareness and to reach out to people by first telling them this is a reality. We want to fight against stigma. Let's not lock our people. Let's not lock them somewhere or block them from our lives. Why? Because they stole from us. They manipulated. They lied to us. They are this. They are just into addiction and substance. Remember, this is a disease. And we've explained the chain of rehab and what goes on. Let's break this mentality of the public hospital we grew up hearing about. And I think all those, they are all created stories, neither here nor there. The thing is, there is psychiatric health. We run a rehab as all smart therapy center and training institute. And we are here to walk the journey. We are talking about minimum of 90 days when it comes to substance use. Of course, schizophrenic and schizophrenic, because I know for some people do not understand. This is what quote unquote we call Mwendawazimu. You know, the people we see when our quarter makaratasi, they are all over and all that. This is to let you know they are not possessed, they are not bewitched. It's not a curse. It's not the family they come from. They are mentally ill. If you know someone, please refer them to All Smiles Therapy Center. If you know someone going through addiction or anything else, we are here for that. And as we've said, 90 days refers to substance and drug use. We also have others like can prolong depending with what exactly one is going through. And of course, we have other short terms in cases of bipolar and maybe unknown bipolar that need to be administered. Uh, in cases of MDD and other things here and there. So just talk to us just in case you are not so sure. So what we do is we deliver to you an entire end-to-end -end program where once you come, you'll be seen by a psychologist. From our psychologist sent to our psychometrician for assessment, this is where we rule the presence of any mental disorder, mental illness, and should there be any, no need to worry because we have our in-house psychiatrist. So from there again, you are sent and here is where you are again re-evaluated for us to get to know is this a case for admission and admission is in the rehabilitation center or is this a case that we just require medication as you're going on with the counseling or you can just be referred back you just go on with the talk therapy so this is how we go about it and should it be a case of admission again now we take you to the rehab and yeah entire thing so you can see there is hope help and there is processing and full recovery. My name is Teresa Kainika, the psychologist at All Smiles Therapy Center. Uh, we've interacted much more. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. First for watching and for sharing. Please subscribe. Don't just watch and go. Just sub please subscribe and let other people also get to know more about us because as we've said there is help and definitely they will equally get help we are a team of professional psychologists here at all smiles i know some of you you uh, interacted with us and you know us by now and now we're going to have ketavi as part of our family because we really want to be bringing more about this uh, real life experiences for everyone to get to know about it as we create awareness so thank you so much and until next time Bye-bye. Goodbye.